so good morning to all uh, so i welcome you all for the last day of this uh, atal sponsored ftp program on earthquake resistant structural systems and design for buildings and structures so today uh, in the first session we have with us uh, professor hina gupta uh, she is a scientist in uh, csir that is cbri uh, rurki so i am very much happy to welcome uh, ms hina gupta uh, so for this particular fdp program uh, to talk on uh, effect of earthquake on heritage structures uh, so i am very happy uh, to introduce uh, ms hina gupta to the participants uh, so ms hina gupta she is presently uh, working as a scientist in the structural engineering department of csir central building research institute roorkee she has completed her mtech in structural engineering from adigar muslim university in year 2014 and uh, she is a meritorious student uh, by securing two university gold medals for standing first at the mtech in civil engineering as well as among all branches uh, her research interest are uh, uh, primarily structural analysis uh, repair retrofitting structural health monitoring of heritage masonry structures uh, she is involved in the various heritage structures projects uh, like amar fort uh, sun temple csmt mumbai fri sri jagannath puri temple rashtrapati bhavan etc she has also developed new masonry testing setups and working on various retrofitting strategies for heritage components so recently her team has developed and transferred a technology to an indian msme firm she has authored more than 20 uh, national international journal papers conference research articles and books etc uh, to her credit she has also won various awards like the best best women scientist of the institute so we are uh, very much happy to uh, invite uh, ms hina gupta to this uh, atal sponsored fpp program so on behalf of all the participants present here i welcome you ma'am for the session so now i am handing over the session to ms hina gupta Please, Thank you so so much, ma'am, for the nice introduction. And uh, so I hope uh, today is the I think last session of this whole FDP, I suppose. So the last think, technical session, yes. Yes. So I think um, so. Uh, the all the people present here, they must be aware about all the things related to earthquake engineering. So I'll not go into the basics of earthquake engineering, but I'll directly. come over to the, uh, the their effects on the heritage structures mainly like how these heritage and masonry structures are affected so like i'm also my team is working on uh, mostly on heritage structures so we are aware that how these structures are getting affected due to earthquakes and there are so many other factors but this earthquake is a major factor which we can't avoid we don't know when that earthquake is going to come and uh, when it will destroy everything so that is the reason we are we are taking this um, topic today so uh, a very good morning to everyone so today's uh, presentation topic is effect of earthquake on heritage structures so it will include masonry structures as well heritage structures uh, means generally the structures which are older than 100 years like our monuments they might be of maybe of age of 400 500 or 1000 years more than that also we are having the oldest stone monument like sanchi stupa we are having and we don't want to lose our culture things so we we want that this culture what we, we are having this should be passed on to our next generations also but if uh, we are not able to take proper care and maintenance of these structures then we will not be able to survive these structures for more years so like uh, you can see in the first slide we are continuously losing our heritage to these disasters sometimes it can be earthquakes it can be volcanoes it can be floods it can be landslide or it can be fire even it can be tsunamis it can be hurricanes so like this these are some of the monuments where people are losing their lives as well so and day by day we are losing them some sometimes it is our mistakes that we are not able to handle these structures sometimes we are applying cements to them sometimes we are applying some of the things which we are knowing that uh, it should be applied to concrete or steel structures and we are trying to apply all these things to these type of structures also without knowing what is their load transfer mechanism what is their material at, as you know at that time when these uh, monuments were constructed they are of different material they, they can be of stone they can be of bricks they can be of anything and these bricks and even these stones they are very different for uh, 
what we are using at present that time the motor uh, they were not using cements that time they were using lime motor lime motor and that to mixed with natural ingredients like it could be mixed with dal it could be uh, mixed with some kind of pulses or bloods even axles and uh, there were so many natural ingredients which were mixed to them rice husk or anything that was giving them some kind of porosity strength and different kind of things which have developed over years and today if we want to recreate that we need to have that kind of knowledge and that kind of time with us that lime was even that lime was kept for at least 6 months to 1 year to prepare now we want cement mortar to be prepared in 6 minutes so it's not possible to compare that thing with lime mortar it was cements is having very early strength but lime was having very slow long term strength it was in the starting it will not give you any strength but at long term when you will see it will have so much strength that it is it will be stronger than mortar even we are doing some experiments in our lab also with lime and we are seeing that thing that initially it is not having that much of strength but afterwards it will give you really good strength and uh, stiffness and all other parameters which we require engineering parameters which we require in a structure so like first of all if we are coming to earthquake so earthquake is basically the shaking of surface as you all know resulting from a certain release of energy in the earth atmosphere and uh, as we know it is one of the most destructive natural hazard that cause huge amount of loss of life and property and why we are focusing on heritage structures today because cultural heritage structures are an integral facet of irreversible cultural heritage of a nation and have to be constructed several hundreds and thousands of years ago so here what we will do we will discuss most probable causes of the collapse and few case studies also the damage patterns that has been observed and uh, that will be discussed that will be useful for the prevention of, to damage of cultural heritage and other building in seismological area because first of all we want to know that what kind of damage it is happening and how we have then we we can suggest any retrofitting technique or what we have to do it for so i'll give you a brief idea about if time permits i'll give you a brief idea about all those repair and retrofitting techniques and mounting techniques what we can adopt in case we are observing any damage or we are knowing that that structure can be in damage right now i am not discussing about the analysis things that how we have to do analysis because it is a very vast topic but i'll give you a brief idea about all those things so this uh, masonry heritage structures uh, because we mostly consider that uh, these are made uh, about 100 years ago so before 100 whatever is built before 100 years ago that can be considered as a heritage so uh, that time cements were not there so and steel was also not used so rcc was not used basically so we considered that these things are strong in compression but weak in tension like in the left bottom you can see one figure like a brick mortar masonry is there then in that case if it is in compression that will be very strong like until and unless its crushing strength is reached it will not fail but if it's coming over to tension or some kind of shear it is having then these mortar in between they will start cracking sometimes if mortar is strong then units itself start cracking because with age and the factors we are having these kind of environmental factors sometimes we are having acid rain sometimes different factors sometimes overloading and uh, vegetation growth all these kind of factors they will weaken the uh, masonry so they are deteriorating this masonry itself maybe sometimes brick maybe mortar so in shear also like uh, in uh, left side of thing you can uh, right side you can see that in shear earthquake they are creating some shear kind of thing in diagonal tension so these are some of the glimps like these kind of failures could be observed in a masonry or cage structures like these are sometimes it can be totally collapsed collapse of brick masonry and in bhuj earthquake in kilari earthquake sometimes like uh, in the bottom left there is a column where the all the blocks they have been shifted from their place and even like in the mid figure you can see there is a vertical crack in the masonry like units has itself cracked it's not just like the mortar mortar is strong enough here but something has happened 
it may be foundation settlement it may be overloading it may be near the thing or it may be earthquake also which has created a vertical if uh, crack in the masonry so that time we are able to diagnose that these are non uh, non structural cracks these are structural cracks which will affect the load transfer mechanism and the structure has to be retrofitted now the next figure shows the cracks in a wall so like these are some typical failure modes in masonry like uh, in a masonry which is having openings it can be rocking there it can be sliding it Uh, there can be diagonal tension there can be toe crushing see toe crushing will happen when there is a excessive pre compression from the top and that time it will have toe crushing type of thing but if it is not having that much of pre compression then rocking type of failure can happen so and uh, in between sliding and diagonal tensions are also there so uh, in out of plane mechanism there can be hinge formations or if it is a three leaf masonry or different uh, it is a masonry which is made from rubbles then it can be totally collapsed also similarly arches are also having hinge type of uh, mechanism and uh, domes and walls could have similar type of mechanism as of arches so what could be the possible causes possible causes will be sometimes intrinsic weakness of masonry like it is having a very high weight but very low tensile strength so it is having very high inertia which will attract too much force towards it like earthquake if earthquake is coming it will attract too much earthquake force towards it because of its weight so uh, this could be a, if material is weak it will not be able to survive that kind of earthquake so significant variations in the quality of materials among different structural materials some because sometimes it could have happened like uh, a heritage structure or a monument was there but it was later readapted for some other purpose or we have constructed two floors over it like if it was used for a hotel or some kind of thing then we could have made some uh, more stories over it so at that time the material change will happen obviously and overloading will also happen because we don't know that what for what purpose that and for what load that structure was constructed at that time and without knowing all those things uh, we are constructing some additional features to it so it will create a problem to the structure overturning of the walls due to out of plane inertia forces like in the previous slide we have seen the overturning due to out of plane inertia forces if the facade of the forts are not tied well to the rest of the monuments this thing i'll show like how a box behavior in a structure is very important when in a, especially in a masonry structures because it is not like a frame structure where we are having these uh, boxes of columns and beams which are tied together and we will just create a brick masonry in fill to just create a partition type of thing because we don't consider that brick masonry will take that much load but in case of masonry structures this main uh, there are no columns or beams so main load bearing elements are walls and arches and these domes only so uh, these has to be properly tied together with itself otherwise every element will behave separately and that separation if it will happen anything it can cause a destruction to the structure like if earthquake is happening some some walls can fall through over uh, out of plane action some wall can fall through in plane action itself otherwise in in plane this structure is very stiff so we need to connect that out of uh, whatever walls are failing through out of plane action they should be connected with in plane walls so another factor could be due to reduction in of motor shear capacity diagonal cracks are more common to which flexural failure can happen so like in previous slide i was showing you there could be diagonal cracks if motor is not having that much of capacity and uh, there could be some kind of stabbed crack as well so due to large opening the shear capacity of masonry pairs may not be enough to resist lateral loads like uh, we were seeing that there could be rocking failures there could be sliding failures and other types of failures could be there uh, which can happen due to large openings due to the proper roof and dif uh, flow diaphragms the inertia forces that generated in the large masses of roof level get directly transferred to the walls supporting each portion of the roof regardless of the relative stiffness of the resisting member so uh, what it will do like in a rc structure itself we are the load transfer mechanism we are having that first of all load will come over to any slab then it will be transferred to beams 
then columns and then to foundation so similarly here the, since the load uh, be, uh, bearing structures are the walls itself so load will come from the slab and then to the walls or to the arches and then to the foundation so here what we are calling uh, slabs as a diaphragm so these uh, all the roofs and the floors they could be a, uh, they could act as diaphragms with which will transfer the inertia forces that are getting generated due to anything that especially here we are if we are talking about earthquakes so whatever inertia forces are getting generated on these diaphragms they will transfer it to uh, their walls so um, in uh, some uh, next slides i'll tell you how these forces are getting transferred so uh, sometimes they may have used some rounded type of aggregates to fill up the cracks or some kind of things which will also fail uh, during earthquake so is in short there are the reasons like it could be age of material it could be heavy roofs it could be sometimes pounding diagonal bracings could be there so like if uh, i'll show you first of all some of the case studies like uh, very famous earthquake so i'll talk about first of all nepal because Nep um, why i'm talking about nepal first because nepal is a uh, nepal earthquake so many heritage structures were destroyed and it is mostly having masonry structures so this um, epicenter of this uh, nepal earthquake which happened in 2015 was gorkha district which was having a magnitude of 7.8 uh and uh, about 9000 people were dead and uh, 22000 were injured so it but see uh, how much uh, damage it has caused to buildings like so many buildings were destroyed at that time in seven in lakhs so why it, it has happened because most of these cultural heritage buildings are using stone masonry and brick masonry bonded with mud but mortar or lime mortar so if it is made of mud mortar it is not having that kind of strength what we can expect from lime or uh, cements cements are much more stronger they are having shorter life but in their short life they are having uh, very strong uh, strength so they um, these kind of mortar they can easily deteriorate with time in a few of these structures the main frame is made of timber also so making them susceptible to damage under lateral shaking because timber it might have de uh, decayed with time or uh, even uh, if it is not decayed it might not be of that strong nature so this is just a map which is showing that how these uh, earthquakes are happening in nepal so whole nepal district is full of earthquakes only so um, like these these type of structures are especially found in uh, kathmandu or nepal structurally uh, because in the bottom uh, left also you can see like this is a brick masonry but it is a kind of three leaf brick masonry you can say so see it, the facade is a uh, even type of brick but inside is it is having a rubble kind of masonry which can be seen so what it has happened these rubble masonry was not able to connect itself with the facade masonry so they the facade masonry has came out and it has collapsed in the bottom figure so some structures which have been destroyed there are names like which we'll discuss here like patan kathmandu and baktarpur district which were listed in unesco world heritage sites also these uh, mostly monuments were were built between 12th to 18th century so but in this span of last uh, 200 years you can say many mo monuments have been destroyed and many more it can destroy in the coming years even so this is just a plan where it is showing that these are the different temples or the things so uh, if we will see this like how these structures are what are the structural deficiencies and cause of damage in the urm building urm basically means unreinforced masonry which is not having any kind of reinforced in it so in masonry we are having three kinds of masonry like uh, unreinforced masonry reinforced masonry and the confined masonry confined masonry is uh, a sort of beam and column type of thing where beams uh, we are having some kind of uh, columns and beams small columns and beams which will act together with the walls in load transfer mechanism 
but in urm building we are not having any kinds of reinforcements or any other thing so just the walls will act as the load uh, bearing uh, elements and reinforce masonry is in between the two where it could have some kind of horizontal bands to tie these uh, walls together so um, that kind of things can be observed here we'll see if uh, these buildings are having these kind of things or not so in first figure you can see that out of plane collapse is happening why we are seeing out of plane collapse because you can see these perpendicular walls are intact so only the facade wall has been collapsed due to the earthquake so in second figure failure of masonry units due to lack of proper binding so here you will see these elements are uh, everything is not getting cracked or uh, they are not uh, da damaged but some of the elements they are getting damaged so why it is happening because they might not have been properly binded with the whole uh, structure so the, uh, then in this figure last figure heavy load concentrated uh, concentration in the fourth story of masonry building because uh, they might have constructed it afterwards so if you are seeing that the difference in this so what it can uh, cause it can cause a type of a inverted pendulum type, uh, type of thing which which will create um, a very heavy mass at the top and when earthquake is coming it will attract very high inertia and it will fail in the next figure there are complete uh, collapse of uh, uh, there was a rc slab which was constructed over a masonry building because sometimes it happens that earlier building there, there might be some earlier buildings were there which were having kind of timbers uh, slabs or some kind of thing which were later converted to rc slabs but what will happen these rc slabs sometimes they will not be able to Uh, connect properly with the walls because you will be just resting the rc slab over the walls so what will happen when an earthquake or uh, anything is happening these rc slab will behave differently and these walls will behave differently so in this case you will see the rc slab has not broken it has not damaged but it has just came out of the, when shaking was happen it has just came out of that so it has completely uh, it has collapse so these kind of diaphragms when we will see uh, so um, these kind of diaphragms are uh, flexible diaphragms so there are two kinds of diaphragms one is flexible diaphragm other one is rigid diaphragm so in case of flexible diaphragm they are um, not flexible diaphragm is one which are not able to transfer their stiffness properly to the elements below them so this uh, and they will act differently their displacement and the other members displacement will be different so you can see the uh, our code also in uh, one eight um, earthquake code one eight nine three two thousand sixteen they have now incorporated the definitions of flexible and rigid diaphragm like it depends on how it depends on the displacements so they have included in that code you can uh, further can study on that and, um and the next figure you can see the out of plane failure of heavy gable portion in the brick brick masonry so just like that in the top you can see just below the slopey roof they they are having a very heavy gable type portion which has fallen other walls and other things are intact and this is dharara tower which was 2 uh, 203 feet tall about nine stories and it has completely collapsed after the earthquake it was perfectly fine without any cracks anything and suddenly an earthquake came and it has completely collapsed now here you can see this inside the inside material you can see how it has crushed like it was kind of rubble type of thing which has just which was not having any kind of reinforcement any kind of binding or uh, something which could resist the tension so when this tower it it has started vibrating or something due to earthquake this material was not able to uh, take up any tension or shear kind of thing and it has completely fallen now um, uh, similarly in this structure also like that bar square so it is also having these overhangs and other kind of things it has fallen because they were not properly bonded someone has later tried to provide some uh, bands kind of thing which you can see in the mid figure but uh, even though that was not able to protect that structure 
and uh, similarly in the next figure you can see that there was a building uh, there were square and before it was intact and afterwards it has completely collapsed no sign of the building even could be seen similarly here so we can see how these uh, temples and all these monuments are getting damaged that we are not having even signs of their failure like um, afterwards we cannot say that there was a monument that was existing here so this is a cause of concern like if um, in this structure this was a timber structure so in this timber frame there is a small sway which, which has happened in that this is structure so at least the structure is standing but we are having some cracks inside it and uh, in this is uh, failure has happened these are called vega type structure mostly this type of uh, construction uh, type is, is found in nepal as you will see most of the structure is of this kind only so the um, heavy dome it has collapsed mm, some uh, but some of the stone masonry temples they have shown good performance even because uh, in the nearby structures have fallen but they are like you can see in the right back the last structure i was showing you was this only which is very small structure in the back if you will able to see and this uh, structure the dome and uh, this has fallen but this structure is intact without a sign of any crack so uh, like after observation what was the observation like uh, some of the inherited structural uh, characteristics like they are having mostly sym symmetrical construction they are having multi level plinths so and conical mass distribution so uh, like in uh, previous uh, figures we are seeing that there are uh, uh, nine story buildings or vega type structures they are having multi level plinth structure which, which are creating a difference in their inertia at every floor level and also they are having a conical type of mass distribution so mostly the mass is getting reduced at the top however but what was the thing that could that was problematic so however the lack of vertical structural continuity because they are having uh, no rigid connection between various structural components and heavy roof structures so they are even they are having conical mass distribution but even then their domes and the top that that was there even in that nine story building the uh, pillar there was a heavy roof at the top so they these things are making these structures more vulnerable to strong strong ground motions like uh, here also the similar kind of structures could be seen and similar kind of failure is there mm, uh, see in this the lack of rigid connection between the base and super structures that has led to the collapse of the temple earlier it was this this is the before and this is afterwards so there are some external beams they have given some stone beams but uh, even then these uh, the plinth is okay plinth is as it is but the superstructure it has completely collapsed so but uh, what one thing was observed that the temples which were having wide plinth at the uh, bottom they were actually protected like they were sustained so there was a some observation that if it is have it was having a by uh, very wide plinth then it was all right so in as in the cases of these two they were having wide plinths so um, no damage was happened to them sometimes there could be just the failure of some elements like uh, the lack of uh, connection between like i was telling out of plane collapse of these just a facet so this a uh, facet has collapsed otherwise the structure is intact uh, so there was a after that nepal earthquake there was a earthquake in kashmir also and uh, so i'll show you how this um, earthquake resistance features was there how uh, these buildings were saved or these were damaged so these are mainly uh, using wood for their construction they are having small openings and thick walls and stone foundations so and also these buildings are uh, periodically maintained and repaired under retrofitting schemes which ensure the lesser degree of damage to these structures during past event of natural disasters so you can see that these uh, structures are uh, even after earthquake these structures are not that much damaged because 
one factor that is very important in case of these buildings is maintenance because if you are regularly maintaining and monitoring these structures you can see that how these buildings are deteriorating and you can even see the weak zones that what could be the if any earthquake or anything is co coming then uh, where that building could damage so these are some of the structures like the amamadan structures which are not destroyed uh, then there was a um, earthquake in istanbul also and uh, they were uh, their damage could be seen that there were different rigidities of tier system and longitudinal transfer sections which are weakening the system differences in stiffness of the perpendicular domes they are having too many domes that they and these even then these domes were not properly connected with arches so uh, the differential movement of these arches and all those things we can see that it could create a differential settlement at the base of the dome because of which failure has happened here the photo is before the earthquake i don't have the photo after the earthquake which i could have uh, shown you that how this structure was completely collapsed there then uh, this structure was not that much damaged but it uh, it was having some cracks and some vegetation growth and all those things because it was having very stiff columns uh, that does not bend and stiff columns collect high levels of stresses and thus failure could be brittle but it has um, sustained that failure because uh that uh, some rigidities are there in the material so uh, like here also in this uh, mosque there are present of weaker frames and arches that cause the swelling or the horizontal deformation and this uh, this building is not collapsed but people are monitoring this so they are observing that what what could be the possible failure locations and uh, they are retrofitting it accordingly in sikkim earthquake so there were different kind of categories of buildings that that there could be uh, we are categorizing all those buildings which were uh, there so there could be buildings in field stones or rural structures unburnt brick place or uh, there could be ordinary brick buildings or there could be reinforced buildings or other types of buildings so you could see that maximum category is category c which are reinforced building or the well built wooden structures so we'll see how this uh, buildings are damaged or some photos i've taken from rc rc structures also reinforced concrete so to show you how that how it could fail these are all masonry structures only here you can see like in first the partial collapse of uh, these uh, rubble masonry support wall so this was a stone wall which was rubble masonry and it has uh, not fully collapsed the upper story is intact but the bottom story the wall has collapse similarly in uh, you can see that that damage of foundations so here this building is uh, built on because they are on built on high, um, uh, hilly slopes so uh, these pillars or these foundations they could be of unsymmetrical heights yeah, because uh, we have to maintain the slope also so this uh, pillars because it was a slopey reason so in the bottom figure you can see that there are foundations there are foundations so um in that case this foundation has getted uh, getting separated to this um, earthquake which has happened even uh, in this structure also you can see and uh, this the upper figure you also you can see that uh, foundation has vertically collapsed so this i'm showing you some uh, rc uh, beams and columns also because this wall this uh, wall has uh, differentiated from the columns and beams you can clearly see the wall is getting separated and uh, even in this structure also the wall has completely fallen from that point uh, similarly in this uh, you can see the complete uh, collapse of uh, this it may be due to shear reinforcement so in uh, rc structures the uh, reinforcement we are providing the longitudinal as well as the shear reinforcement in columns that is very important even at the beam column joints so sometimes when we are having 
large spacing and shear ties that could be a reason of failures because it will not be able to resist that kind of forces which earthquake is generating uh so again coming to uh, earthen walls like uh, in this case cracking is happening cracking of earthen wall is happening and here partial collapse this wall th there was a small opening and uh, from there this partial collapse has happened there could be some kind of shear cracks even in uh, like uh, they have provided a um, masonry but in that case also that shear cracks see how it has crushed from the two sides this kind of x crack x diagonal crack we generally used to call and their open uh, tie uh, the shear ties have opened in these columns which has just uh, over overburdened these columns and it has collapsed so in these uh, similar kind of damage could be observed here also in buj earthquake in buj earthquake there uh, we have observed some damages like it could be overturning of long walls like in figure a you can see the wall has not cracked or anything it has just completely overturned so in second case in, there was a minaret or something in jabalpur but it has fell since it was stiffer than the other minarets due to stairs there was a staircase inside the minaret and due to which so you can see the spiral crack that is happening in this minaret in the figure b so which has happened due to the staircase which was providing the uh, stiffness difference uh, due to this uh, presence so uh, in um, figure c you can see a diagonal cracking type of hap uh, diagonal crack is happening in the wall and um, in the next figure these are complete collapse of these chhatris so some chhatris are uh, all right intact but some chhatris they have completely collapsed uh, so similarly in this case also gable walls have failed the roof and walls are intact but one wall has failed due to the overturning failure here a corner failure could be observed the openings nearby openings uh, their uh, failures could be seen but uh, some structures which are very high also and uh, then even they even then they are having heavy mass at top but there was no damage even like you can see this water tank this is uh, not having any damage it may be of uh, like good material or it was properly maintained and uh, like in this structure also you can see there was no heavy mass at the top and it was going uh, like in decreasing fashion of these masses it is going on <coughs> and it was not damage Mm. here you can see the uh, masonry structures that have damaged in uttarkashi and chamoli earthquake also like uh, out of plane collapse this is a very famous type of collapse in case of gable walls and uh, in case of like rubble masonry where these walls are not properly connected to each other in that case this uh, some walls will completely collapse suddenly the wall will collapse with If the mortar could be mud mortar or lime mortar which has now uh, loosened its strength so it has co completely collapsed like here you also you can see uh, smashing like x diagonal type of crack which i was uh, telling you and in the bottom uh, right figure this is a, a good example where you can see sliding is happening like no, no crack other than this horizontal crack could be seen on the whole building neither in the foundation plinth or in the superstructure just the superstructure has slided from its position at the plinth level the building is still reusable just it has slided uh, so sometimes other type of crack which are not that significant but uh, that could be parapet collapse also building is intact nothing has happened just the parapet has collapsed but sometimes it could do these kind of damages like this parapet has fallen over a car and it the car has damaged so uh, even a person if a person is standing below the building the building he might be thinking that this building is very strong this building will not fail but some element failure could have happened which has fallen over him 
some bricks could have fallen over him and uh, he could have serious injuries because of that so we need to prepare these kind of uh, damages also like where overhangs and uh, roofs and parapets which are which seems to be very insignificant to us that these are non structural elements but they could uh, provide a damage which could be very serious to someone like here uh, also these attachments and overhangs there was uh, some kind of attachment or some walls were there which has completely damaged from this building there also partial collapse of gable wall now this is a very uh, good example of liquefaction that can happen after an earthquake liquefaction is not a structural problem but it is a foundation uh, uh, i will not say foundation it is a soil problem which can cause a problem in the foundation like building is good everything is good you are maintaining the building but because there was a problem in the soil because of which it has liquefied due to an earthquake it has started boiling the sand boiling you will say one term is there so because of which the it has lost all its sheer strength in liquefaction we call that soil has lost all its sheer strength and due to which now it cannot take any more uh, sheer strength so uh, the building is completely intact but it has just overturned because the soil was not able to take that much load now similarly here this soil uh, has sank the building is intact everything is good just the soil has settled so because of that settlement see how much settlement has that because of build this uh, building has displaced in the bottom and uh, similarly in this example also you can see other buildings are okay but this soil is not behaving properly so these buildings are getting uh, one over the other and this could cause uh, like if this building is falling over other building other buildings will also fail similarly in this example the building is intact everything is good now you can see why this has happened because in if this in this figure you will see this is having a very very shallow foundation the foundation was not good here the building has not fallen because of liquefaction but because it was not having a proper foundation with it the, it was just standing on the soil so without foundation almost without foundation this building was standing so first of all whenever you are constructing a high rise building or anything its foundation has to be very stiff it was just having a very small raft over it uh this this has happened due to foundation settlement because there was a differential settlement in the foundation and diagonal crack has happened so um, this is happening in great wall of china material degradation is happening and this is a photo of amer fort where uh, some architectural features have fallen material is getting degraded so these are some non structural cracks which are not affecting the structural properties of that uh, building so these are some other cracks which are happening due to earthquakes some shear cracks angle cracks this this figure i earlier also showed it to you like how these uh different components of a columns they are getting separated from each other and uh, the load uh, transfer will always obviously will not be in a straight line and similarly in the left figure this has the pre this is a kind of a retaining wall which is having um uh, soil earth pressure from the other side and the corner is getting cracked these are some cracks in masonry walls and vertical cracks in masonry chimneys so like um, i'll explain you why these collapses are happening so this is one of the collapse we have seen that these are just a summarizing of all those collapses that has happened so these are like uh, out of plane collapses happening so why it is happening because it is having insufficient connection between the orthogonal walls and there are absence of eyes and tie beams otherwise if this wall was properly connected to this wall with the help of some ties or with the help of some bends then this complete collapse could not have happened because other walls are intact uh so this was another kind of failure where collapse of the corner was happening why it is happening because of scarce connection between the orthogonal walls again that thing 
and uh, it gets correction between floors and walls so if floor was connected properly or these walls were connected properly to themselves with some ties or some bands it would not have happened now here uh, sometimes this facade itself is getting uh, collapse so why it is happening because it is it is a material uh, basically you can say material deficiency because material has deteriorated and there was improper connection between different leaves because the outer facade was not properly connected to the inner facade so here uh, the building is having different openings and between in in between there there were uh, it is forming small small piers and because of these presence of many openings and uh, due to scarce quality of the material these are creating shear kind of cracks so these shear diagonal cracks are generally observed in uh, in between the material that is in between the openings when when there are too many openings similarly here this wall is get, if you will see this vertical crack this what uh, wall is getting separated from the orthogonal wall so why it is happening because of the out of plane rotation of this wall or the sliding portion of the whole building so uneven load capacity of the soil and excessive soil sloping can cause this problem so these are some example where if it is a free standing wall then what could have happened like uh, it could overturn or if it is having a in plane wall it could slide also when it is having a small length to weight ratio but when it is having uh, um, uh, in figure c when it is having moderate length to weight ratio then and it is having a in plane type of um, load then it could cause a diagonal crack because of the tension that is happening if it is a very long wall and in plane crack is happening then uh, in that case it could have a very long um, sli uh, this uh, diagonal cracking could have happened over there sometimes it could also show some sliding things also in between the mortar wherever mortar is weak so uh, like if it is a wall without any roof which is like i was telling you without any roof or it could be with a flexible diaphragm also where that uh, diaphragm is not providing any stiffness to the walls then in that case and also these walls are not properly connected to each other or every wall is behaving differently so like if this wall a is not getting any stiffness from wall b this wall a will overturn and uh, every wall will behave in its own way in uh, this case this wall is resting on two walls so and when earthquake force is coming this inertia will be and if it is a rigid connection this inertia will be properly transferred to this wa walls b and uh, earthquake force could be resisted some diagonal cracks could be seen if was uh, then this is a uh, rigid diaphragm where all these uh, walls are properly connected to the roof what is happening in that case this building is moving like a single structure like all walls are getting moved in this direction only in one direction in the direction of earthquake so there are less chances of failures so but if it is a shear wall with opening then we can see this diagonal crack can happen Uh, there could be collapse of domes also because of their weakness of the supporting structures if they are not able to transfer their inertial stiffnesses to the rest of the structure then it could have happened it could be due to presence of weaker frames and arches that can cause swelling of these structures and uh, there could be a difference in the stiffness of uh, different domes which can uh, create problem similarly in case of walls also there could be strength variation geometrical variation or load variation which can uh, create a problem so uh, these are again these kind of examples where we can see this shear cracks and collapse of top floor it has happened just the wall because this diaphragm was not properly connected to the building then other things that could have happened that could be the cause also and that could be afterwards also because whenever sometimes what we do we provide some iron or some steel to that building because we think that yeah, masonry structure is not having any tensile strength so let's provide some uh, steel reinforcement to it 
wherever we want to tie that building but because of that like it could have uh, like that building could be corroded and because of that corrosion the material have could uh, de de uh, degraded and if there are cracks also then at that time also this uh, uh, steel could have corroded which can cause further problems to it one of the very very important problem in masonry structure is ingress of water most of these structures they are getting deteriorated because of presence of moisture in them material is getting deteriorated corrosion is happening there vegetation growth is happening there and why all this is happening because of lack of maintenance because there they could have choke drains sometimes there uh, some uh, roofs or something has uh, get uh, damaged and they are not repairing it and there could be various reasons like this could have happened due to poor maintenance and uh, ingress of water these vegetations growth and this is a very exa a famous example of angkor wat temple because this temple is having so much uh, trees now that these trees as actually they are not grown from the soil they are growing on the structure itself and uh, now these there are uh, like number of trees and so much big trees now you cannot remove these trees if you are going to remove these trees the structure will collapse the structure is now dependent on on these trees so there are some reasons that why it would have happened that could be because of our lack of workmanship sometimes lack of proper maintenance aggressive so all these factors we have discussed so what type of damages also we have discussed like they could have uh, vertical cracks or these so we have already discussed all these cracks but uh, the categories of damage like whatever damage is happening to any structure we can categorize them like uh, there are in five categories we can categorize like if it is a slight non structural damage or like if there are only thin cracks in plasters or it is a slight structural damage when there are small small cracks falling off plasters it could be a most moderate structural damage when there are deep cracks in the walls wide spread cracking in columns and piers and the severe structural collapse when there are gaps in the walls and approximately 50% of the structural elements have already uh, failed and these buildings uh, has taken a dangerous state so um, and complete collapse is called when a large part or whole of the building has already collapsed so uh, this is the performance criteria of any building so take if i uh, go to first one that is operational that operational means if it is having very very slight cracks like if plaster or uh, some minor cracks has happened then that building is operational like uh, this uh, performance criteria is after earthquake like uh, after earthquake when you are entering at any building and you are seeing okay uh, my building is safe only my minor cracks are there i can uh, live with that that's not a uh, any issue but uh, if some more cracks are there so take then another one is immediate occupancy facility continues in operation with minor damage and minor disruption in non essential services like it could be some cracks which could be repaired at some point of time but it is not very urgent that i have to repair otherwise i cannot live in this building then you are saying that immediately you can occupy that building but you have to get it something you have to get it repaired life safety life safety is substantially protected damage is moderate to extensive like life safety is means like if you are living in that building then uh, it is on that risk like uh, you have to repair it urgently otherwise the building could be uh, damaged any time and if further earthquake is coming then the building will collapse then uh, the final one is collapse prevention life safety is at risk damage is severe and structural collapse is prevented that means it is just before the collapse that collapse has not happened but uh, uh, it will happen any time it could have happened so collapse prevention is just uh, that building is going to die now so you cannot live with that building now uh, so i'll just quickly uh, go through this repair and strengthening techniques that 
what could be apply if these buildings are damaged and uh, there are so many structures so many buildings that are building earthquake prone areas they are having high mass so uh, what you can do why we need a repair or retrofitting see retrofitting is generally a term which is used to pro we say that uh, while retrofitting we mean that we are providing more strength to the structure so that it can face further future earthquakes so uh, uh, so why we need these repairs and retrofitting to restore the lo lost strength of a structural element to impart additional strength and change in usage of structures revision in the design codes so sometimes that any building which we are constructing it was not uh, made to according to the newer code but it is telling that uh, uh, now it requires some kind of bands or some kind of things so that time you can repair that building or retrofit that building according to this is uh, some conservation principles are also there for uh, especially for the monuments building they, what they are telling that whatever interventions you are doing with that building it should be minimum and it should maintain its uh, authenticity and integrity so it should not be like you are going to a monument i'm going to rashpati bhavan and i'm seeing that uh, okay this is structure is uh, not safe okay let's provide this let's provide a column let's provide a gable let's provide this so it cannot be done it has to be very minimum whatever is like if you uh, especially if you need this you should do it but it should not be visible first of all like what you can do is like if a structure is failing completely it is on the verge of collapse at that time only you are permitted to do some of the things and some of the changes in that structure so but whatever you are doing to any monument it has to be properly documented and it has to have evidences so that in future if one wants to know what was done afterwards and uh, if one wants to remove that if if he feels like that whatever intervention or whatever changes you have done to that structure is not correct he can remove that changes and he can redo that so it should be reversible and it should be like clearly visible whatever the structure was earlier or original structure was there and whatever repair thing you have done it should be clearly visible so that one could easily remove that and but uh, what should be done it should not be like uh, you will provide a steel in a stone monument it should match the fabric like if it is a stone structure it should match the fabric of stone structure so it is sometimes it is very difficult to repair a heritage monuments it's not that easy as it seems like because you have to think of minimum intervention it should not be visible it should match the fabric as well it it should look different so this is our conservation principle to repair any monument so that is the challenges involved in this uh, repair and retrofitting of heritage monument so it is a very difficult compromise between the requirements of structural theory and conservation principles like you have to satisfy the structural theory as well that is structural has to be safe but as well as you have to see that if it is following the conservation principles or not so what you can do you you have to minimize the noise and disturbances and damage to the surrounding buildings also and provide some temporary shorings or supports so sometimes some temporary restoration things we uh, generally do so so that in time we can devise some a uh, good we, we should come up with some good uh, retrofitting technique which will uh, will which will follow this structural theory as well as the conservation principles but to understand it a uh, masonry itself is very difficult because we don't know that thousands years ago how this thing was constructed what was uh, how they have used the local materials and the technique of construction we don't know the level of workmanship we don't have that kind of workers now the uh, beautiful architecture of that time the beautiful uh, thing carvings that has been done people cannot do it now the age of the structures there is so much age it now uh, if we are going to repair it with uh, some other material like cements or it will not match it with this the so weathering could be there the material could have deteriorated and uh, there could have been alterations it's not like the we are the first who are coming over it and doing some alterations because it is standing from thousands of years people might have seen some cracks or something and they may have done some alterations also and uh, there could be effects of previous earthquakes which could have changed the load transfer mechanism of that structure even
so there are some of the codes which you can follow to know more about this masonry and uh, these heritage structures which could be like um, there are some ias codes and fema codes so methods of building uh, conservations they could be preservation maintenance restoration reconstruction and adaptation so what actually is preservation preservation is to when you are maintaining that building fabric in its original or the existing state maintenance when you are maintaining and doing some minor paintings or whatever you want to do so that the building will not further deteriorate that is called maintenance like we do our, with our own homes we generally in one year or two we uh, have a paint or minor repairs that is called maintenance of that structure restoration the uh, you are knowing that some of the things have uh, fallen or you want to change the tiles or the mortar then that is called restoration because returning to a known earlier state without introduction of any new material you are not introducing any new material you are just incorporating that material only so uh, reconstruction is uh, returning to a known earlier state introduction of new material like you know that that uh, thing was looking like this in the like in the left side and that structure is now collapsed and someone wants that uh, please rebuild that structure so you are doing a reconstruction with uh, because you cannot use that kind of material so you have to use some new materials adaptation means like if some structure uh, they are abundant like some monument is there or anything is there and uh, you want to use some new fe uh, function of that like you want to use it like a museum or a hotel or something like that so that that structure could be maintained also and that structure could be used like uh, sometimes uh, every structure cannot be used as a tourist place because like very small houses or something is there and that cannot be used as a monument but it could be used as a museum or a restaurant or some kind of thing so when you are changing that function you can introduce some new materials so these are uh, like repair and strengthening and retrofitting like repair is uh, reconstruction renewable of any part of a damaged deteriorated building to provide the same level of strength which the building has prior to the damage but what is strengthening the reconstruction or the renewal of any part of an existing building to provide better structural capacity than that of the original building so that means like you want to strengthen that building you want to provide some strength but you don't know whether that will be sufficient for an earthquake or not but if you are uh, providing that uh, building should act properly under a future earthquake then uh, what you have to do it is called as retrofitting so retrofitting means you are upgrading that building for uh, further seismic activity so that it should not collapse so uh, but why we prefer retrofit and not reconstruction so uh, uh, reconstruction is obviously like then we have to destroy that structure and we have to reconstruct uh, reconstruct it further it may be costly also it will not provide that uh, we want to preserve our old things and it will be like uh, we are again doing some new things so we don't want that first thing is that in heritage structures and other things like it is faster if we are retrofitting it it could be cheaper it could be done in phases like one day we can repair uh, some cracks other time we can repair some rooms or uh, so it can also ensures long term future safe so some sometimes we need to do only member level retrofitting like uh, when all the structure is not get whole structure is not getting collapsed so we will just repair whatever walls or whatever elements that are having cracks or anything we will repair just them uh, why it is done because it, it will be economical and appropriate also but uh, it will uh, also reduce the structural irregularities like it will correct the vertical irregularities or so we can add some uh, shear walls or brace frames like here uh, some frp retrofitting sometimes we, there are some uh, beams or uh, some walls are there we can provide some frp retrofits but this cannot be applied to monuments yeah, that's why i'm showing an example of rc structure only but uh, this could be applied to masonry structures some of the places they have applied they are having their own advantage and disadvantages so in global strengthening that means the whole structure it has to be retrofitted like on a whole that structure needs some kind of retrofit so like one example of global strengthening is base isolation 
when we are providing isolators at the base we are not doing anything with at the member or elemental level we are just uh, providing uh, some isolations if you are knowing about base isolation so um, uh, isolators at the bottom so in this uh, figure also you can see like if it is a fixed base building how much vibration it is having and if it is a base isolated it is almost like a straight type of building it is it is based on a seismic design uh, philosophy that means that we want that the structure should be uh, should not face any kind of earthquake and uh, it should be completely uh, protected but it will not happen because some of the forces will anyway come to a structure but it will decouple the superstructure from the ground with flexible mountings so like in this uh, mid figure you can see that these are uh, other two are the fixed building but in between it is having a base isolated so it is almost like a building that is separated from the ground because earthquake will anyway happen in ground only it will not come in air so when this building is getting separated from the ground it will uh, obviously be preserved but in new buildings it is very easy to do it is not that easy to do in uh, older buildings but some people are now started doing that thing also so like in this figure this some base isolators have been provided and uh, some dampers could be also be provided to resist the forces like this these are the good uh, some global strengthening techniques like i was telling you about tying of walls together so some uh, like these kind of ties could could be provided after you are cutting those things and you are providing some bands and then you will replaster it so you will not be able to observe so what it will do it will provide a box type of effect to the structure so when the structure is there the structure all the walls and all the elements will not behave separately but it will act together so when it will act together there will not be any elemental type of failure there or sometimes you can provide buttresses also uh, like like to separate the long walls you can provide some buttresses and it will also uh, prevent it against the out of plane failures correction between existing walls some uh, metal stitching or some kind of things you can do some stress relieving technique like if low too much load is ca coming over any column you can uh, sometimes you can provide additional columns also to increase that area of the column and uh, like similarly uh, uh, you can provide a lintel over any door or any arch over any opening so that it can take uh, more loads repointing just like a maintenance you are pro again wherever mortar has been deteriorated you are providing that again you can do grouting also so we have observed that uh, grouting means like when you are injecting some things inside like in this figure you can see some uh, ca cavities were uh, formed inside the material mortar have deteriorated so what you are doing some in between the those holes you are injecting some material some grout material it could there are different kind of grout materials available it could be epoxy it could be cement grout it could be lime grout many grout materials are available these days so uh, that similar um, grout you can match from there and you can insert that that is a very uh, invisible or uh, you can say very common technique that is used uh, stitching also sometimes like uh, if there is a crack or something some steel is provided against that crack pinning could also be there like if it is a crack and uh, you have to connect that outer material with the inner material some pinning could also be uh, there like uh, this is the frp i was telling you frp of um, externally bonded component uh, the, then uh, in that case what you can do like this is a arch and you are providing a fiber reinforced uh, polymer over it which is having a very high tensile strength so what uh, now you can see that the member has fa uh, fallen but since the arch is connected to um, that frp sheet so it is not getting completely collapsed now similarly these frp and uh, these steel reinforced grout and all those things they they are providing to give the tens more tensile strength to the material so these are tying of that like this is a uh, masonry tower which is tied with steel strips at different levels some steel strips are provided 
which will tie together that structure uh, in case of multi leaf also you can what you can do you can do some kind of steel connectors so which will provide uh, prevent the separation between the leaves so that these leaves are not getting separated this is a example where base isolation has been done in uh, san francisco city hall this is now uh, th this was a, a very old building but this is now floating on 530 isolators so uh, afterwards they are they have provided these isolators they have cut down the nearby foundation and then they have provided these kind of isolators to that building so this is the basement of that building and uh, in the right bottom figure you can see that this uh, stairs they how they are separated from the ground it is not now resting on the ground but it is getting separated like in this figure you can see also in oakland city hall california they have uh, inserted base isolation in the bottom story this is a high tower but they have provided the base isolators at the bottom afterwards so there could be some research gaps at these existing techniques sometimes lack compatibility with the original fabric of the structure or uh, there could be applied repair material should be such that to protect the adjacent material from premature decay like you cannot apply any material like uh, you if you are applying cements with lime it will not have a similar property so one of the material will obviously start decaying so in case of heritage structures porosity and moisture transports are sometimes more important because uh, like i was telling you there could be moisture ingress or water ingress could be there because of which the uh, these materials will start deteriorating so you need to have the proper evaporation proper porosity of that material so that it will not collect inside the material and it will start decaying those kind those materials so what could be our approach our like uh, in this figure what we uh, we can see that there was a structure which was having some kind of crack some someone has added in this right figure you can see that someone has added a buttress to it now that even after that buttress it was having some cracks so someone has suggested to strengthen the foundation so these in this blue color they have strengthened the foundation also then also cracks were not stopping then someone was telling that uh, okay some uh, you can increase the wall thickness and the wall section so they have spread concrete and all those things and then they have increased those section but even after that then uh, they, what they have done they have stitches and they they have added some micro piles so this was the thing that was done to that building the, the whole structure was changed to that right structure then but what could be followed that you can provide some minimum interventions and you can monitor that now we are having that kind of sensors which could monitor the the performance of the structure and we can see whether our thing whatever we have provided is working or not working and where uh, what are the locations that we need to provide some uh, further repair or uh, that kind of thing so uh, so what actually is needed that we need to provide minimum interventions and long term monitoring there could be different monitoring uh, techniques there could be different sensors could be there vibrating wire sensors for strain gauges or uh, electrical strain gauges fiber optic lvdt potentiometers load cell accelerometers and they can identify corrosion cracking strength delaminations degree of deteriorations environmental parameters so so this figure is actually showing like there is a bridge anywhere in the world and in your computer wirelessly you can see that wherever damage is happening so uh, i'll not i'll skip this because of time limitation this uh, fiber optic sensors which could be uh, placed over any structure and they could tell you about the different strain that is happening to that structure like in some of the buildings uh, there is a example where this fiber optic sensor was placed this, these are very famous sensors for uh, long term monitoring so what has happened there was a earthquake that has come at that time if you will see in this graph in during the february there was a in between january and february there was a earthquake 
due to which now some crack has happened and these strains have increased in that structure so this could clearly show how much damage has happened how much displacement has happened after an earthquake so if we were not having any kind of sensors to that structure we would not have known that how much damage has happened but we are knowing the initial condition also and after earthquake condition also so based on that we can provide uh, some retrofitting techniques and we can know the condition of our structure so what could be the conclusions of this study that uh, we need to protect our heritage structures and safeguarding these sites is extremely important resources are not always properly utilized or coordinated we are not knowing that what kind of material we need and first thing is we need in depth evaluation of all these structures and we need to have a proper strategy which will meet the conservation principles as well as structural integrity also and we have to develop an interdisciplinary methodology which will include monitoring retrofitting and all these things uh, to work together so there could be uh, different techniques that are available we should employ all these things and uh, like the uh, all the major causes of damage observed were due to poor construction practices sometimes so uh, and uh, like i'll not say about monuments that it is poor construction practices but it is poor repair practices i'll say so before starting the construction in new buildings it is very important to study future causes of destruction and suitable measures uh, should be taken before so if we are knowing that what kind of damage could have happened to any structure so we can uh, be ready with a new a new structures we should be knowing that the old okay this kind of damage can happen so we should be ready for these things so we can avoid all those things so with proper analysis of heritage structures there is a need to protect our heritage monuments as their evidence of a rich cultural heritage and maintenance and retrofit are two critical components for the protection of buildings in areas of seismic activity it has also been proven that maintained building have cope better than those in poor condition during and after an earthquake so what uh, selection of a pro, uh, particular technique depends on the seismic demand seismic capacity and the required performance level functional characteristics and importance of the structure so any retrofitting technique cannot be applied to every structure it has to be uh, analyzed based on so many different factors thank you this is my email id if any time of any query you can so thank you ms hina gupta for your excellent session on uh, effect of uh, earthquakes on heritage structures and also thank you for uh, highlighting the various techniques available for the repair uh, strengthening and retrofitting of uh, heritage structures now the forum is open for discussion so participants you can just uh, post your questions in the chat box or You can unmute yourself and you can ask few questions to Miss Hina. Ah, uh, Madam. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Ah, ma'am, uh, ma excellent presentation. Age is just a number. For your age, your uh, your knowledge is very vast. So, uh, my question is: Ah, uh, uh, you didn't speak anything about FT analysis being carried out. so in your work uh, did you carry out uh, it, it was just a preliminary investigation and the retrofitting was suggested or any fp analysis was carried out the model was made and the yes uh, actually fem analysis and all those discrete element analysis they are very important for any structure and we always conduct all those analysis before suggesting any repair or retrofitting technique because we cannot suggest any uh, retrofitting techniques before carrying out any analysis so uh, this is very important but uh, like this uh, topic today was related to the case studies uh, related to earthquake so I, i have just give a brief about the retrofitting techniques but in as uh, initially also i told that analysis uh, techniques i'll not be talking about today so, but okay ma'am like dynamic analysis using uh, like uh, uh, fe uh, discretization and uh, dynamic analysis is must that is your suggestion yes it is a must yes okay thank you ma'am 
Uh, Ms. Hina, I think you can see the questions in the chat box. There is one question. Okay, okay, ma'am. I'll see. Asian lime mortar mix and ingredients are not openly available in the internet. Is there any website for this? No, right now, so much research is going on all these things. So right now, we cannot say that uh, they could be readily available because first of all, whenever we are going to any monument, then we have to first of all analyze that uh, lime mortar. It cannot be applied like there is no, uh, we cannot say there is a journalistic lime mortar or any mortar that is available that could be applied to any structure. We first of all have to do some XEM, uh, some XRD or uh, this TGA, all these kind of chemical analysis and we have to understand the mortar first and generally what we used to do in our labs, we try to uh, formulate a compatible mortar with that. That what a mortar is compatible, we will uh, develop in our lab and then we will try to uh, provide it to that structure that what kind of chemical composition or uh, what different kind of en uh, engineering properties are required at that site site now how do we test ancient structure as NDT is restricted to concrete structure only yes NDT is restricted to concrete structure in practice so in practice we uh, we are knowing that uh, ultrasonic that pundit equipment uh, or the rebound hammer, generally what the uh, practicing engineers they use, they are uh, uh, done for that. But uh, in research, in even in our lab, we are using extensive entities for um, testing these structures. But they, they are in research phase. They are not uh, readily available in market for uh, uh, practice, practicing engineers because in uh, masonry structures or in heritage structures, every structure is different. So we cannot, uh, still now, this has not been generalized, but uh, in um, heritage, we are extensively using all these entity techniques. Some of the ancient structure is still in good condition. Is there any special techniques Asian follows in those days? Yes, that's what I'm telling. Because uh, in Asian times, they are whatever techniques they are following, we don't understand all those techniques. That is uh, the first, uh, first, negative point we are having that without understanding those kind of structures and we try to repair them. We don't have that kind of materials today. We don't have that kind of um, expertise that without using any FEM analysis or uh, such kind of thing, they have constructed those uh, elements. Because uh, if I give you an example, like uh, that time, what they used to do, they used to analyze these arches using some of the chain methods. So using some chains, they used to see that how these arches and this thrust line will work. And till now, people don't know that uh, how they have constructed so many domes and arches and they are not getting any uh, damages. So they, they are uh, actually there were techniques, but we are sometimes we are destroying these structures with applying some uh, time cements or uh, some uh, improper techniques. If you read more about the construction of heritage structures, it is a very vast uh, topic, then you will understand more. How to test subsurface portions of heritage structures or modeling done in softwares? Any reverse engineering practices? Uh, to test subsurfaces portions of heritage structures, uh, we have NDT techniques. Uh, we have so many entity techniques like tomography, GPR, and all those things which you can employ, but you have to do an R&D on it. And uh, so otherwise, in a nearby heritage structures, they will not allow you to excavate all those things. Like near, uh, if you're going to a, if you're going to Taj Mahal, they will not allow that you can just dig out those foundations and you can see that uh, what is the foundation and how is that foundation behaving that will not never be allowed but you can use uh, because in Taj Mahal also our team has used the uh, GPR and all those things and they have seen uh, the foundation things so or modeling done in softwares so for modeling so uh, there are different softwares FEM packages and DEM packages available and with your understanding of that structure so first of all the first and foremost point and um, uh, modeling or these things that 
you you must know that you must understand the structural behavior so uh, when you are able to understand the structural behavior you can model it likewise i hope i have answered your question it's not a straightforward answer you can see So, any more questions? Uh, Madam, good morning. This is Ramchandra speaking from Telangana. Actually, I have a doubt. Uh, right now, I'm working on my uh, research on the same ancient structures. There is a uh, structure which was uh, constructed in 400 years back in Hyderabad. So, we are working on retrofitting of that itself. So, we got stuck up uh, in uh, how to go for modeling. That means, what is the uh, method which you have to go for this uh, nonlinear analysis that we are stuck up on? Can you help us in uh, moving forward? Uh, first of all, you have to see what kind of structure. If it is a stone structure or a brick masonry structure, and there are different types of analysis techniques available for them. That uh, it, it is a stone structure, man, completely. Okay, for a stone structure, you have to see if it is a disjointed structure or if it is a connected type of stone and what type of stone has been used there, rubble or ashlar stones. Then uh, based on that category, you can uh, see that you, you need to use the micro model or the macro model or the discrete element model. See, there are uh, different uh, techniques available. So based on the results you desire, that what kind of uh, results you want, what actually uh, you want to do with that thing. So if you want to do a dynamic analysis, then earthquake analysis. And uh, like if you want to see just the stresses, you can do a macro model also, but it will not give you that uh, perfect stresses or all those things because you will not be uh, introducing the disjointed nature of the different elements that has been used there. So depending on the accuracy also, it will be uh, like you have to decide the thing. Okay. Thank you. Like if you just want to model that structure and just want to see as a whole globe on a global level, a mo macro model will also work. But uh, there are different approximate uh, techniques uh, level also. But if you want to uh, like, uh, uh, if you know about discrete element analysis or the applied element analysis, these kind of techniques uh, in which you can uh, model a spring um, type of model also, in which you have to give property of every motor and every joint even. Every element has to be modeled in that way, that whatever the um, original uh, size and all those things and every motor and all those things has to be given a property. But that could be applied to a very small portion. So depending on the size of your monument and uh, uh, accuracy, you can decide the met method. So I think there are no more questions. OK, Same shall man. we close the session? Uh, participants, if you have any questions. So there are no questions. Uh, so, so on behalf of SBCE and uh, all the participants present here, so I'd like to record my uh, heartfelt thanks to Ms. Hina uh, Gupta uh, for this uh, wonderful session on the effect of earthquakes on heritage structures. Uh, thank you, Ms. Hina, for your presence here and for sparing your uh, uh, valuable time with us and also for sharing your expertise among all the participants. So it was very informative. So thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.